XAI has just shown off its brand new model, Grok 3. According to Musk and three of XAI's engineers, Grok 3 is an order of magnitude better than Grok 2, which basically means it's about 10 times more powerful. XAI says they trained it in a massive data center in Memphis, Tennessee, featuring around 200,000 graphics processing units. Imagine a huge facility with rows and rows of GPUs churning through data 24-7. Some folks even call this the Colossus supercomputer, and Musk claims it's fueling Grok 3's massive potential. Now, how does Grok 3 stack up against big names like OpenAI's GPT-40, Google's Gemini, and DeepSeek's models? According to XAI's internal benchmarks, Grok 3 actually beats these competitors in areas like math, science, coding, and problem solving. And the company specifically cites results on tests such as AIME, which is a math competition benchmark, and GPQA, which deals with PhD level questions on physics, biology, and chemistry. For those of you who really pay attention to AI performance, XAI claims that even the smaller versions in the Grok 3 family are ranking well on Chatbot Arena, this online environment where you pit different AI models head to head and see which one does better based on real human votes. One interesting thing about Grok 3 is that it's not just a single model. There's a whole family under that umbrella. We've got Grok 3 Reasoning and Grok 3 Mini Reasoning, plus a standard Grok 3 and a mini version. The reasoning models are designed for more complex thought processes, basically chain of thought prompting that allows the AI to explain or at least internally structure its thought process before giving you an answer. But note that XAI says certain parts of Grok's reasoning are hidden to prevent desolation, which is a technique used by other developers to siphon off knowledge from an established model. So if you're hoping to rummage around in Grok's chain of thought, you might be out of luck. Anyway, what can Grok 3 actually do for you? So, it's integrated into a social media platform, X, and it's also available through a dedicated website, grok.com, and an iOS app. If you're on X's Premium Plus subscription tier, you can get immediate access to Grok 3. There's also something called Super Grok, which is a brand new tier for both the Grok mobile app and the grok.com site. Rumor has it that Super Grok might set you back around $30 a month or $300 a year, although these prices haven't been super clearly confirmed. Once you jump in, you'll see a bunch of new features. For instance, there's something called Deep Search, which is basically Grok's advanced research tool. Scanning the internet, scanning data on X, and giving you these super detailed summaries. You can even narrow down your search to specific sources or websites if you want. Another neat trick is Big Brain Mode, which basically tells Grok 3 to spend more time thinking so it can give you a more comprehensive answer. That's especially helpful if you're tackling complicated science or coding questions. And as if that wasn't enough, Musk says a voice mode is on the horizon, probably within a week. That'll let you interact with Grok 3 using spoken commands and have it respond with a synthesized voice, kind of how ChatGPT or Google's systems can do nowadays. Hey Grok, what's up? Can you hear me? <laughs> I'm so excited to finally meet you. I can't wait to chat and learn more about each other. I'll talk to you soon. During a demo, the XAI team showed Grok 3 mapping out a hypothetical space mission from Earth to Mars, makes sense given Musk's other big venture, SpaceX, and also coding a game that was described as a cross between Tetris and Bejeweled. So if you're into game development, coding, or just messing around with an AI that can generate entire mini-apps, Grok 3 could be a blast to play with. Another demonstration had it do advanced math and science problem solving in real time. And some glimpses also showed it can produce images and handle queries about images, which puts it in the same league as the multimodal capabilities of GPT-4 or Google Gemini. Naturally, with these new features, XAI is pushing further into direct competition with OpenAI. Let's not forget the recent drama. Musk filed two lawsuits against OpenAI, accusing them of straying from their founding principles, and he even offered to buy their nonprofit arm for $97.4 billion, a deal that Sam Altman obviously turned down. There's definitely some tension there. And to add to that, both companies are raising huge sums of money. Word on the street says Musk is looking for $10 billion for XAI, which would push the company's valuation up to around $75 billion. 
Meanwhile, OpenAI might raise up to $40 billion at a valuation that could hit $300 billion. But XAI's not just competing with OpenAI, they've got eyes on Google, which has Gemini, and also on Chinese AI powerhouse DeepSeek, which recently open sourced its R1 model. That's a big step in the AI arms race because open sourcing advanced models can let new players jump into the field more easily. Elon Musk, on the other hand, said that XAI will open source Grok 2 only once Grok 3 is mature and stable, which he thinks might be a few months from now. That might be consistent with XAI's approach of giving away the older stuff once the newer version is locked and loaded. Now, all of this might sound pretty rosy, but building these massive AI models isn't cheap. On top of having a giant GPU data center in Memphis, XAI is rumored to be finalizing a deal with Dell Technologies to get more than $5 billion worth of AI-optimized servers. Meanwhile, there's a broader push by companies like SoftBank, Oracle, MGX from Abu Dhabi, and OpenAI to pool around $100 billion and potentially up to $500 billion in order to construct more AI data centers in the US. It's basically an AI arms race with all these corporations throwing billions of dollars into bigger and faster computing infrastructure. One of the more interesting angles to Grok 3 is its edgy approach. When Musk initially rolled out the original Grok family, he promised it would be unfiltered and capable of going into topics that other AIs avoid, maybe out of caution or because of content rules. But after a while, testers found that Grok and Grok 2 still refused certain political or controversial queries. Musk has said that's more a reflection of the data set it was trained on, web content that has its own biases, and that XAI wants to keep pushing the model to be as politically neutral as possible. Whether that's actually the case for Grok 3 is still an open question. People will definitely be testing it to see if it's leaning left, right, or if it's truly in the middle. Now, if you're an Android user, you might be a bit bummed to hear that the dedicated Grok app is only on iOS right now. However, you can still use Grok within the main X app on Android. No official word yet on when a standalone Android Grok app will roll out, but presumably they won't leave Android folks hanging for too long. They do keep repeating that updates are happening daily and improvements are basically ongoing. In fact, Musk stated that you might notice changes in Grok's performance within just 24 hours, which is pretty wild if you think about how fast these large language models can adapt once you feed them updated data or refine their parameters. We also shouldn't forget that business applications are a huge piece of the puzzle. Musk mentioned that in a few weeks, Grok 3 will be available through XAI's Enterprise API. That means big companies can integrate Grok's capabilities right into their own platforms. If you work in finance, coding, or any research-heavy field, that might be a game changer. Potential use cases include code generation, debugging, fraud detection, advanced data analysis, or even medical diagnostics, assuming appropriate regulatory steps are taken, of course. All right, if you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.